I'm Tom Jackson. Welcome to the second installment of The Great Divide, a YouTube vlog about the divisions within the disunited states of America. What divisions am I talking about? Lots of people in the states agree that one very significant problem we have today is that we the people are more divided than since the Civil War, or at least since the 1960s, when we were divided over the U.S. invasion and occupation of Vietnam, arguments about civil rights, and the Nixon presidency. Today, some of those same core issues have come back around, like racism, xenophobia, misogyny, accountability of those in power, along with things like issues of science, and the question of the reliability of the media. I'll be looking at all these issues and sub-issues in future episodes of The Great Divide. For now, I'm going to state what I see as the cornerstone of the latest flare-ups of these largely age-old issues that have plagued humanity for at least as long as we've been recording history. Probably longer. Who did more to light the fuse of this latest exacerbation of the divisions between us? American commercial media. In fact, the popular commercial media itself has been divided, largely through the efforts of the far-right political faction, which commonly refers to itself as conservative media. For almost three decades, multi-millionaire Rush Limbaugh has spread hatred for anyone and any idea that isn't in lockstep with his ideas, which he refers to as conservative. For over two decades, Fox News has been telling its fans that it is the only fair and balanced television network news channel there is. They don't use that specific term anymore, but their constant raging about the liberal media goes on and on 24 seven. That constant drilling of the idea that anything that isn't so-called conservative media is liberal media is one of the brainwashing processes that has beset millions of people in the country's voting populace. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not here to defend all the other commercial media out there. Much of what Fox refers to as liberal media also has some very significant problems, but it is not a liberal bias or creation of fake news. The problem with much of the mainstream media is that they are totally cowed from being in any way critical of American corporations. They don't want to bite the hand that feeds them, so they tiptoe around certain issues or don't even mention them while also sometimes reading verbatim a corporation's advertisement cleverly disguised as a press release. Additionally, popular public media like NPR and PBS tend to soft pedal issues and strain to appear unbiased. And this approach is due to an understandable fear of losing funding, whether it's federal or state funding or funding from corporations or individuals. Stated more explicitly, they have allowed themselves to be cowed by people in power. That's why we hear quotes from NPR like, critics say it's inhumane, in reference to the Trump administration policy of separating immigrant children from their parents. Why the choice of the words critics say? It is inhumane. That's a fact, not an opinion. Yet they choose to avoid making a powerful statement by changing it into a reference to one side of a contrived debate. And therein lies the crux of the problem that conservative media has fostered. Myriad moral issues have been politicized thanks to conservative media, their fans, and the politicians who have jumped on the bandwagon. Fox and those AM radio snake oil salesmen now have millions of ardent fans, all of whom view their opinions as unquestionable facts. And the facts presented by anyone who's not a part of their cabal are dismissed as merely misguided opinions of those others. One classic example, anthropogenic climate change. Conservative media has been denying the problem for decades. Meanwhile, all other commercial media has not been mentioning the problem or facilitating the so-called debate that should have been wrapped up more than 20 years ago if they paid attention to the IPCC's warnings. Or, in the past few years, some channels started acknowledging the problem, but never put it front and center every day, which is the only way to get people to fully understand the urgency of the matter. We can't count on commercial media to give us the truth on this issue because the oil and gas companies and automobile manufacturers have been their biggest sources of advertising revenue for decades. 
Tragically, because of conservative media's more hardline denial of the issue, this scientific issue became politicized and sharply divided in the minds of the American public. The result has been very little remedial action, losing critical time during which we could have taken measures to address the issue. So that's one example of how serious the media problem is in this country. The bottom line is this. Large-scale commercial media has long been inefficient and skewed at best, even before the rise in power of far-right media like Fox News, Breitbart, Rush Limbaugh, and now a slew of other AM radio tabloid-level story twisters like Alex Jones, who, in case you hadn't heard, in divorce proceedings, stated that the whole thing is an act. And I believe that. It's an act. It's a show. All about growing a fan base that will interest advertisers who have made Alex and Rush and Sean Hannity, etc. very, very rich. And the relatively recent flare-up of age-old non-political issues in the minds of their fans is largely due to this fact of the media politicizing these problems. So there's the foundation for this new YouTube vlog called The Great Divide. In future installments of The Great Divide, I'll be going into more detail about what went wrong with the American news media, particularly over the past few decades. And now media itself has become one of numerous issues upon which we are divided, to the point where it seems that a reasonable debate, which honestly seeks a beneficial resolution for we the people, can simply no longer be achieved. That theme of critiquing commercial media will run throughout this vlog, regardless of what the main topic, or which division, of each post may be. I'll soon be uploading some posts for The Great Divide based on the interviews I've done for Still Out of Balance, a forthcoming feature-length documentary which focuses on ExxonMobil, climate change litigation, and corporate accountability. Still Out of Balance is a follow-up to Out of Balance, which I directed in 2006, and which you can find in disc on Netflix 11 years after they started offering it. It remains the only documentary expose of ExxonMobil there is. You can also watch it on YouTube. I'll leave the link below. Thanks for listening. See you next time on The Great Divide.